Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306, back with another video. And um, this is a project that I've been meaning to do for a while, and I finally got around to it. Uh, basically, I'm playing with my SNES and NES Classic here. Um, and this is based off of a, a project from a, a, a fellow modder uh, who wrote a program for the 18 Mega 328P here. It's basically a, um, a you know, Wiimote Protocol I2C um, converter. And his original program had um, just logic level inputs uh, so that you can wire buttons to make your own arcade stick that can plug into one of these consoles and control it. Um, so I've modified the code actually uh, in order to take input from a serial transceiver. And this guy is a Bluetooth module. It's an HC05. Um, and I've paired this with a HC06 module right here. And so this acts as a master and this as a slave. And there's a serial link in between the two that's sending um, bytes just constantly. And uh, so what I ended up doing was I programmed another AT Mega 328P um, to act as a parallel button to a serial transceiver. And it basically encodes the data into um, a 16-bit packet. And it sends the data over. This chip decodes that data and then it, it um, sends an I squared C packet uh, via, you know, this connection here to the uh, NES Classic in order to um, send that button press data. So I just want to do a quick demo. The only thing I have wired to this right now is a battery pack just to power it, uh, but there's no physical connection between either of these two halves. This is fully discreet from this. Um, anyway, I can just give you a quick demo of it working. So you can see all the buttons work. I can uh, pause the game, go back in. This is um, a hacked um, NES Classic. So if I press uh, down and select, it'll kick me out to the main menu. And you can see here, I'm just scrolling through. You can see everything works. So yeah, anyway, um, just turn off this audio before I get a copyright strike. But yeah, um, you can see that this all works. And when I press the button, I have an extra LED here to show you it'll um, light up when it receives uh, serial input. Um, so whenever I press a button here on the receiver end, it lights up to show you that it's receiving, you know, a uh, valid button press data packet. But I'm probably going to desolder that when I actually build this into a controller. I'm going to desolder um, the LED. I'm going to actually make a like a, a separate board for the uh, processor and try to run it as low power as possible so that I can use an internal lithium battery and it'll last, you know, a very long time. That's my idea. Um, but yeah, you can see everything works. I'm able to uh, play fully wirelessly now. These guys are Bluetooth, so theoretically I should be able to get about 30 feet range. It does take a couple seconds when you first start uh, the modules up for them to pair, um, but after that it's it's i'm not noticing any lag as far as i can tell i'm sure there is some some amount of lag um so it might be kind of difficult to play like punch out for instance but um other than that this seems good enough for me i'm gonna button this up i'm gonna end up using a tiny little surface mount uh chip instead of this dip one and my idea is to um, 3d print a case around this uh, plug that's a little bit bigger that can fit both this um, Bluetooth stick as well as the chip itself. And that'll be fully self-contained. It just goes right into the front of the uh, console. Anyway, hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed this video. And yeah, also when you press a button, here I have uh, the LED light up on the, um, the Arduino Uno board there. Okay, and a little bit more work. I um, modified my code a little bit to, instead of reading um, you know, raw pin states, to actually interface with, this is a stock uh, Super Famicom controller, so this will work with um, SNES controllers as well, American ones or European ones, whatever. So it'll um, actually read the serial input, so you actually don't need to modify the board itself. This could just be an add-on module that just, all you have to do is solder you know, five wires and it works. Um, so I just have it set up here, um, currently paired over there with my uh, NES Classic, I have uh, Mega Man 2 running, and I can actually just start a game here.
and you can see everything works. I can actually just start a level and you can see here when I press the button on this controller it lights up showing that it's actually receiving and you can see here once again um, when I press a button this LED very dimly lights up. Yeah you can see here it's running. Let's see. I'm not playing very well with one hand. <laughs> And I died. Anyway, you get the point. Go back home. Press and hold down and select. And we're back home. So yeah, um, I also do have a dedicated home button. I programmed one of the pins uh, in case I wanted to add that functionality. So yeah, anyway, um, basically this is now more or less complete. The software fully works. I don't notice any real latency. Um, I'm sure there is some latency due to processing, but this is running pretty quick, so it's it's pretty decent enough for me at least. Uh, so what I'm going to end up doing is, uh, like I said before, design tiny little boards um, so I can shrink this, fit it inside the controller with a tiny little lithium battery um, and some charge circuitry and probably, um, you know, have the USB coming out the top or bottom of um, good enough for me. But anyway, yeah. Um, and for this guy, I'm going to have to design a tiny little board and um, figure out how to, you know, make the uh, connector and whatnot. Uh, but other than that, um, I'll worry about that in a future video. For now, I can at least use this to, to wirelessly game. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.